start with, there's been a, you had a very busy summer up through Labor Day. Let's talk about some of the things people may have missed that's happened in Williamson over the last couple of months. Sure. So we've had a lot of lot of, lot of big announcements, particularly with our residential uh, development coming uh, down toward Brock Lane and possibly some on Mahaffey Road very soon. That's a we lot do, of houses, right? We do. There's uh, 60, around 60 homes going in on Brock Lane, and they've actually uh, released the name of that. That's going to be Saratoga Villages and Saratoga Oaks. It'll be two separate um, subdivisions on one, one track of land. So, uh, Is that the biggest housing bump y'all have seen in a while? Or? It's the biggest housing bump we've seen in quite a while, and uh, they're going to they're gonna get started on that uh, as soon as council signs that contractual agreement, which we expect that to happen on Monday at our council meeting. Um, they're planning on starting the civil engineering and that type of stuff, getting, getting ready for that project to kick off. Hopefully they'll start some construction at some point in time this year, early next year. Um, we've had Spring Water Festival, obviously that took place the fourth Saturday in August. We had a good turnout for it. It's a lot of fun. People came from all over. Um, the week following we had the Balloon Festival, which was really exciting. I got to go up on the, in a hot air balloon for the first time and see the town. Um, I'm scared of heights, but I'm going to tell you it was a lot of fun. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Good, good crowds. Um, great crowd. Great crowd showed up for that. It was a, to benefit the Anderson Cancer Society. Um, which is a great local organization that helps local folks uh, that are battling cancer with their medications, um, helps them with transportation to and from their, their appointments and stuff like that. Any way they can help, Angie Stringer and the group over there with the, the local cancer society does a fantastic job. And we're always great to have them here. It was, uh, it's always good to see people turn out. I think we had balloons from Florida. We had balloons from all over, and I don't remember exactly how many, but it was uh, quite, a, quite a sight. Hope to do it every year. Is that Absolutely, yeah. We want to grow it and uh, continue that. This, this year it ended up being um, uh, the balloon event happened. We had launches in all three towns, so that was, that was something unique too this year. Um, you know, we talk about the three, commun three towns but one community, uh, and we truly on that, that weekend or that week we had the balloon festival. We literally had things going on uh, in all three towns, so that was exciting to see as well. You were talking about how hard you've been working. Let's talk about economic development and what's been happening in Williamson that people, some of the things they've probably seen, some of the things they haven't. Sure. So, uh, some of the economic development stuff we've got going on, if you look at uh, uh, the new Ace Hardware store that's going up, you'll start seeing uh, they got the pad and the site work done. That was quite a bit of, that was the, the major accomplishment. That has happened, that's taken place, and now we're starting to see the steel being erected. Uh, I think they started this week, as a matter of fact. There's already some siding going on, so. Uh, that's exciting to see that happening. Uh, we have Maple Bakery just opened up in Williamston. Um, they have been packed out. It is a phenomenal place. If you want to go in and grab a, a muffin or a cupcake or something like that, is they, they, they do a jam-up job there. Uh, they've been well received by the community, and uh, we're grateful to have them here in Williamston. Um, in addition to all the residential development we got going on, lots of onesie twosie homes going up. Um, council's taking initiative whereby we, we're finding uh, properties that are derelict, particularly on the Mill Village, we're trying to revitalize that area. Um, the most recent, I'll give a quick success story, we had a home that was burned out on uh, West 2nd Street and uh, council took the initiative to receive that property, it was donated, uh, again it was a liability for the owner, it was a uh, eyesore for the town and uh, we accepted that, spent a little bit of money on it, having the home removed and now we're flipping that property to a developer who will, who will um, a local developer who will build uh, on that home, on that site, uh, by the end of the year, with the first brand new home on the Mill Village, I think it probably in my lifetime uh, on the Mill Village proper. Um, so that's that's an exciting uh, to see that. And we're looking at other properties on the Mill Village that are derelict or, in, or eyesore in state of disrepair to do the same thing with. So uh, hopefully we'll see some um, revitalization on the Mill Village and uh, other areas of town that that are in need of of uh, revitalization. What's the latest on the grocery store? Um, though I have not heard any new news on the grocery store, we do know that um, the contractual agreement, I believe, with uh, uh, Ace Hardware and Town Square Properties was signed, I want to say it was June, and at that point in time, uh, the current tenants had, I believe, six months to uh, vacate, to build new, and to vacate, so we're, we're coming up on that by the end of the year, so I would expect uh, we'll start seeing some transition over from vacating the current Town Square Properties uh, over to the Ace Hardware, in particular over to the new Hamilton Street property, and we hope to have some announcements uh, forthcoming directly thereafter. But that'll be up to Ingalls. Um, they're the property owner there now, and uh, we haven't heard any new information, um, but we do know they own the property outright. 
And you've been here your whole life. Is this this growth? Is it fair to say this is unprecedented growth? Very much unprecedented. Um, we have we've known growth was coming this way uh, for quite some time, and I'll give credit to the to the previous administration. That's one thing that was done a very good job of planning for that growth. You know, we've been planning for um, ever since I've been on council. You know, ten years or so. We've been planning for growth, and so we know what that growth will look like, and we're wanting quality growth. You know, we don't we don't want just things thrown up. We want what we know what the community wants. Um, you know, we've had a lot of community input and zoning and stuff like that. So we want that quality growth, and we've been able to plan on that for quite a number of years. So it's here, and uh, we're excited about it. Um, we're excited about all the all the things to come in Williamston. What do you attribute this this sudden? I mean, it's not sudden, like you say. Y'all been planning for it, but why why is the growth now seem to be ramping up? Well, I mean, if you look at the housing market, um, the growth is, I think, is pretty much everywhere. Um, anywhere you go, we know there's going to be growth. But there's only so many areas in your in your metropolitan areas, such as Anderson, Greenville, and others. Um, there's only so many locations to be able to serve, and so people can come to Williamston buy a home for less money. Um, there's still a 20 minute, 10, 15 minute drive uh, to work, to and from work. You know, we're, we're happen to have those areas that are available for growth. So, uh, we, you know, we're, we've worked hard on infrastructure, trying to make sure that it's there and ready for when the town, uh, when that growth comes. And so uh, we're here and we're looking forward to it. How has the, the cooperative agreement with the county on sewer expansion helped with the growth? Yeah, that's a, that's a big deal for Williamston as well. So our current plant is, is um, we have a capacity of 1 million gallons of which the town has allocated 700,000 gallons per day and at times, particularly during heavy rain events, we, we get very close or hit that 700,000 gallons. So if we're looking at growth long term, uh, we don't have to have it right this minute, but in the near future, um, we would need that additional 300,000 gallons that the county owned. Um, county had, uh, you know, approached um, our Miss Wilson, our uh, county council member, uh, talked with several county council, other county council members as well as the administrator, and they worked hard uh, to be able to uh, come up with an agreement whereby the town could purchase that additional capacity at 300,000 gallons that the county owns. Um, so we've got, they've had three readings on that, and uh, that's a done deal. We're waiting on our ARP funds to come in. It's the federal stimulus funds. As soon as they come in, we'll stroke a check out, and that capacity will be ours. And it's based on our projections, that, that's going to suit us for the next 20 years. Plus, so that's uh, that's huge. To put that in perspective, if we were to expand our plant to accommodate that additional 300,000 gallons, so we could use all that capacity, an average plant's going to run between 20 and 25 dollars per gallon. So um, we're getting at a bargain rate. It's a win-win for everybody. Um, nobody would like to see a moratorium on building, and uh, without that additional capacity or an expansion to our plant in the next probably five years or so. Um, there would have to be a moratorium on building, and DHEC would probably issue that. So, um, this gives us control of our destiny uh, for a long time, uh, the next at least 20 to 30 years. And so, that's important, I think, for the growth of Williamston and to keep rates low uh, in Williamston. You know, we always have the opportunity to be able to do like other municipalities and sell out our, our water and or sewer. Um, sewer is not a, um, it's a, it's a very difficult process by which to treat sewage, and it's a very expensive process. Um, so we're able to keep those costs as low as possible, um, uh, as well as continue to provide a much needed service for our residents. You've also had some upgrades at the park, am I correct? We've had some uh, pretty substantial upgrades in the park. So right now we're currently working on a sound system that will actually be uh, deployed on the uh, amphitheater that will also have music, ambient music playing throughout the park. So during Christmas events, stuff like that, you'll actually hear or, or the Christmas lighting. As you walk through the park, you'll hear Christmas music playing. Um, in addition, that'll serve as mass notification. So if we have a severe weather event or something like that, I can literally sit right here at the desk or tie in a NOAA weather radio and broadcast a message throughout our parks and, and our municipal buildings uh, to let people know that there's a, a, a situation and, and what action to take. So that's, uh, that's pretty big news um, for that area. If we're having events going on, we need to make an announcement about something, we can do that now. Or we'll be able to do that in the very near future. We can already do that here at Town Hall. Pickleball court, some other stuff? Yep, so pickleball, we've ran into some issue with soil remediation. As you know, obviously the spring is in the park, and so that water table is very, very high. And we've had, uh, uh, we've had a substantial amount of rain this year. Um, so what we found is, is if they were to go in and try to start milling right now, chances are that milling machine would sink up to its axles. 
So when those got to be some soil remediation, I've worked with the contractor. Um, the construction was supposed to actually start in August, and that didn't happen due to those soil issues. So they're going to get us a price to remediate that soil. I expect that to happen probably in the next week or so, and then council will have to meet again and determine you know, if they want to appropriate those additional funds to, to remediate the soil. Um, but we're starting to hit our window whereby they have to have so many days of, of warm weather um, that maybe we may have to push that off into the spring. Um, but our, our basketball courts are left open to the public. We've kept those, uh, those operational, and they will be operational up into probably the week before construction starts out there on the new basketball and pickleball courts. We're also looking at putting a fire pit in in the park. Um, uh, in the wintertime, it's always nice to be able to bring your family out sit around and uh, and uh, enjoy a warm fire so that's what we're looking looking to do that as well we're researching those options in cooperation with Envision Williamston they're heading up that project for us so uh, we're excited about that too a lot of good things going on we got Boo in the Park coming up on October the 30th um, look forward to that we have thousands of kids come from all over and uh, a lot of our vendors set up out there in the park and distribute candy and uh, and let people know about their business and what they do so we're excited about that Shortly following, um, in November, toward the end of November, we'll have our annual Christmas tree lighting. And uh, we got a lot of work. You know, I see people People will comment. They see uh, Christmas decorations starting to go up in November. And a lot of people think that's too soon, but they don't realize all the work that goes into putting it. We have to start at that time in order to be ready. Uh, so shortly following Halloween, you'll start seeing Christmas decorations going up in the park and throughout town on property. So we yeah, hope it'll be. How long does it take to get all that together in that park? Oh, it, that Christmas it, it, drive. It takes or... at least a month, and that's that's pulling folks off of the garbage trucks. That's that's pulling every resource we have to put that together. So we're hoping we'll have a lot of good vendors, or not vendors, but businesses will set up their own displays in the park as well. In addition to what the town sets up, it makes it for a real magical event. Envision Williamston uh, is working with us this year. In addition to Diane Lawless and, and, and her folks that come out and help with uh, the Christmas tree lighting, hopefully this year we're going to end up with the uh, carriage rides, horse and carriage, horse and buggy rides uh, throughout the park. They really want to make it magical this year, and so uh, we're going to go all in and do our best to make it um, uh, not only a, a safe place to go, but an entertaining place to go to for Christmas time. Spend some special moments with your family here in Williamston. Deck the halls is always a great place to come out. A lot of people don't know about that, but we actually set up here in town halls open throughout the Christmas holidays uh, to come in the front door and you'll be able to come through, come in the mayor's office. There's trees lined up all the way down all these long hallways at town hall. And it really is a magical time of year. And it's a beautiful place to be, beautiful place to take your family uh, and spend some quality time with them. So we look forward to that as well. And then it's followed by the Christmas parade a couple of weeks after. Yeah, the Christmas parade, the second Saturday in December at 3 p.m. historically. Now we don't have that uh, nailed down for sure yet, but historically, uh, it'll likely be the second Saturday in December at 3 p.m. Yeah, I've always worked with the other towns to make sure everybody can cover all the parades. That's everything. correct. We want to make sure we're not stepping on somebody else's toes. They're not having something at the same time we are. So, uh, particularly with the Tri City area, Pelzer, Pelzer uh, Williamston, and West Pelzer, uh, we want to make sure we're working with each other. You know, we're promoting each other's events and stuff like that to make sure um, that they get good coverage and good turnout for their events as well. Any other priorities you and council have identified to work on between now and the end of the year? Yeah, so we're currently working on some pretty major water and sewer projects. Um, our sewer project, again, will go from the fire department is upgrading a line that, number one, if about a third of the town feeds into uh, for sewer, and it's our last probably half mile from Main Street to the sewer treatment facility. And one of the issues we have is the piping is not only too small, but it also doesn't have enough fall. Uh, to accommodate uh, long-term growth. We're talking about 10 to 20 year growth. Um, when we have substantial rain events, there's always the potential for sanitary sewer overflows as well. And uh, obviously that's not good right nearby a big creek. It's not good anywhere, but certainly not good, good, by, not good nearby a water tributary such as Big Creek. That's a water source that we're, we're grateful to have and we wanna make sure we take care of it. Um, so that, that initial project will upgrade that line basically from the fire department on Main Street all the way back to the sewer plant, upgrade it, and put the necessary fall on that's needed to accommodate uh, the sewerage uh, for about a third of the town that flows into that, that area. Um, second thing we're working on is a project, it's in engineering phase now, that will replace pretty much all the water lines on the mill village. It's a very expensive project. It's, it's probably gonna be over a million dollar project, uh, but it's something that needs to be done. I think it, in most cases on the mill village, those water lines were put in the 30s and 40s, and they're still operational today. So you can imagine, um, they probably look like my arteries, 
probably a little clogged. And uh, we've, we've known to have tons of leaks and stuff out there. So, so the citizens uh, will really notice a difference when it's that. They'll, they'll notice a huge difference. Number one, in pressure, but number two, in the, in the, uh, the frequency of leaks and stuff like that. Right now, we literally have homes built on top of water lines um, that we, we don't even know where they're at uh, on occasion. You know, they may have a line that was ran back in the 30s and 40s with a home built on top of it. They don't know till they call the homeowner calls us and says, hey, there's water flowing under a home. Well, obviously, that's not good. Um, so that's part of the use of our ARP funds. We hope to be able to leverage those funds with grant dollars as well uh, on the state and federal level uh, to be able to make those funds go as far as they can. But we're already spending uh, funding uh, from water and sewer for the engineering and design phases of both those two major, major projects. Um, and again, those are important for the town for, the, for our future. Um, that keeps us um, sustainable and it also keeps us uh, prepared for the future and any future growth that we may see in Williamston. And since you've been mayor, I mean, you, you've been on council, so you understood the system, but did you know you'd be this hands-on? seems like every time I see you, you're on a tractor. So, you know, it, it's, it's real. This job can be, it's a part-time job, okay? <laughs> and it can be real easy if I come in and sign, you know, do, you know, come in and sign the absolute things you have to do, which is sign purchase orders on Tuesday, sign checks on Thursday, and then uh, leave it up to somebody else to run day-to-day -day operations. Um, I'm a pretty hands-on guy, not only with my business, um, but also with the town, and uh, I found it works out very well. So I can dictate my own schedule, what that looks like, and I can be as involved as I want to be. And, and this is my town, it's important to me. Um, the residents of our town are important to me, and so I'm gonna give it my best. I got three years, uh, about three years, a little over three years left to, uh, to really make a difference. And uh, I think it's a noticeable difference already. We're gonna continue that trend, um, I'm committing. You know, I don't know what's going to happen in the next three years, but I'm committed to the next three years of uh, continuing that upward trend and uh, having good quality growth and, and doing what needs to be done for our residents and for the town as a whole.